<laughs> oh man, I, I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back. I, I I believe it was on part two of Off the Script this weekend, this past weekend, and we're talking about how WWE is thinking about doing a tag team tournament next year after the May Young Classic is done. WWE wants to do a tag team tournament, and the reason. I said this was a brilliant idea was because WWE seems to be breaking up teams left and right this year, right? And I talked about if they did this tag team tournament on the WWE Network in the same vein they did the Cruiserweight Classic, in the same way they're going to do the May Young Classic, which is filming this week. Can't wait to find out what's going on. I said if WWE does a tag team tournament, that it would be one of those things that makes my dick hard. You know what else makes my dick hard? Guitar solos like that. Fucking brilliant, man. I mean, Tony is absolute fucking brilliant. And he's in his mid-20s, man. He's a youngster. And he's a prodigy. But um, that was a clip from my brother's recording session this past weekend. Uh, he went to the studio once again. Uh, I don't know how many songs he's got left in him. He's been teasing, just saying enough is enough already, but he went back in and he took one song that he and I used to play together when we were in our band, Risen, and the song was called Venom Flows. So now he redid it, he re-recorded it, he had Tony put new solos over it, and now it's called The Powers That Should Not Be, I believe is the name of the song. Um, but it's coming soon. It's going to be paired with t-shirts so you guys can buy it and get a t-shirt. The only way you're going to be able to hear that song. And let me tell you something, man. It was something that my brother wrote back when we were together and it was easily my favorite song. It's so fucking good. It's all over the place. It's a mix of thrash. It's a mix of death. It's a mix of black metal. The, 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 the musicianship in that song was just off the charts for when we did it. I can only imagine how great it's going to sound now with top-notch production and fucking Tony, you know, guitar soloing over it. So that, that's just a teaser, man. I wanted to put that in the video. I'm going to put it again on Off the Script because uh, he sent it to me last night and I was blown away by that, man. I'm like, wow, that's fucking good. But uh, I'll tell you what else was good, man. SmackDown Live was a very good show. It wasn't the best show of all time. Wasn't even the best SmackDown of 2017, but it was a damn fun show, man. It was a very fun show. I loved the opening sequence. It was just so much fun with AJ Styles, John Cena, and then Kevin Owens interrupting, and then Rusev just saying, you know, fuck this shit, and going after John Cena. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that. Jinder Mahal was in action against uh, the perfect uh, dark match, Ty Dillinger. Um, finally, Dillinger's not SmackDown Live, but... Uh, we'll talk about him being back. Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis, formerly Mike Bennett. Their feud seems to be uh, moving up to the next notch. So it looks like they are headed for a one-on-one -on -one contest at Battleground. Uh, tag Team Championship Dilemma is still ongoing with the Usos and the New Day. And then the Women's Championship again. I mean, I don't know what's with the minds over at SmackDown Live. But how many fucking multi-person matches are we going to get, bro? Seriously. I mean, WWE doesn't even have enough for a tournament, which I wish they would do if they want to really crown a number one contender. Uh, let's put everybody in a fucking multi-person elimination match. Come on, man. How many? It's, it's the year of elimination matches and tag teams breaking up. I mean, give me a fucking break. So that is one of the only things I really didn't like about this show. It's just the, the, the laziness of the creative process with the women's division. I, I don't like it, man. Go about it in a different way. And the way they came about it and the way they, they got into it was just so fucking cheesy. We'll talk about all of it. But uh, overall, I'm not going to let that bring down what was ultimately a fun SmackDown Live. Now, again, don't misconstrue my, wor my, my words, clowns, okay? This was a fun show. It wasn't a, a great show, but it flowed nice and it was fun. That was all I could say about it. But uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning back into the channel, man. Um, yesterday was a big day. We did the Monday Night Raw review video, which you guys absolutely came out for. Thank you so much. Uh, in, in less than 24 hours, 20,000 views. Uh, it was like, I think, 1,200 likes or so. Still growing. Uh, we also broke the news of Alberto Del Rio and the leaked audio that was recorded by a random individual at 
in Orlando Airport. Alberto Del Rio is under fire and he's being accused of domestic violence. And as of today, I might make a video on this as a follow-up later, right after this. Alberto Del Rio indefinitely suspended by Global Force Wrestling uh, until they find all the facts. So we don't know what's going on with uh, his title reign because he is the Global Force Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. But uh, they did indeed suspend him, and upon investigation, he will remain suspended until Global Force finds all the facts, and then they could make a decision on what they want to do with the championship and as far as Alberto Del Rio being employed with that company. So that is the news as of today. But um, I want to thank everybody for showing up for those, you know, for those two videos. If you missed them, they are live on the channel right now. I'll leave an annotation right within this video. You guys can go check it out. It'll take you right to those videos. So thank you for all the support on that. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below with that bell for the notification. Make sure when you guys hit that bell, turn on all notifications so you guys know when I upload. And it is daily. If you guys want your t-shirts like this, man, the Roman Reigns Get Off My TV t-shirt, barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Thank you to everybody that's taking advantage of my coupon code JD17 at checkout for 20% off. Make sure you guys take advantage of that. I do not know how long it lasts. Uh, it might be indefinitely. I don't know. But uh, as of right now, as of this week, you guys can still purchase your t-shirts, man. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Uh, use the coupon code JD17 at checkout. Another great way to support the show is with Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you to everybody that pledged as of yesterday. You guys are fucking beast. Thank you so much. And Audible, Audible is still offering all new listeners of this podcast, of this channel, of this show. 30 days free of their service with one free audio book compatible with iPhones and Android devices. Make sure you guys go and check that out. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. A lot of great wrestling audio books on there. And if you guys are not into the wrestling stuff, you guys got over 180,000 choices to choose from. And once again, audibletrial.com slash off the script. Thank you guys so much for showing love to Audible. Cap Beast, still offering you guys 10% off all summer. Use the coupon code JD10 at checkout if you guys want any custom made logos on your hats, caps, beanies, anything you guys want, man. Cap Beast has got you covered. CapBeast.com. I will be live streaming during NXT tonight. We got, I believe tonight is the uh, debut of One Bobby Fish. So if you guys want to, you know, come with me and, you know, have fun with me on Twitch, I'll be live over there. Twitch.tv slash JD from New York. Spell out New York. That's Twitch.tv. Slash JD from New York, man. I'll be live over there for a couple of hours tonight doing Q&A. I'll have a couple of cold beverages. We'll watch NXT together. Should be a fun time. And then immediately after that, we'll do the NXT review. And then, and then, out of nowhere, I'll be on out of nowhere tonight with Mr. Joe Cronin. So make sure you guys tune over to Joe's channel and we'll have some fucking fun over there, man. We'll take your questions. We'll take your donations. We'll have a fucking blast. We'll talk about WWE, what we dislike, what we like from the week. Should be a good time, man. So thank you guys so much for all the continued love and support. This is the first SmackDown Live where we've seen AJ Styles as the new United States Champion. There's been a lot of talk as to why AJ Styles won the United States Championship from Kevin Owens at a Madison Square Garden house show. I gave you my reasons. You heard a lot of different reasons from various other podcasters or news sources. But the rumor going around and the speculation that is going around is that WWE feared Kevin Owens was injured and that was why the change was made. As it was noted... Kevin Owens wrestled the night after the WWE Live event, so it looks like he was indeed okay, and that was not the case. Now, there were other rumors, and clearly it wasn't the case because he was in the main event of SmackDown Live on Tuesday night. There have been some other rumors floating around that the MSG Live event did not sell out. This is something that would be alarming for WWE because... Madison Square Garden has always been their strongest venue for decades. This title change would have been made as a way to showcase that anything can happen at MSG events and WWE live events in general. This would hopefully help future ticket sales for events. In a bit of an interesting note, 
The match between Owens and Styles has been removed from the Battleground pay-per-view according to WWE.com. It is unclear if it will be added back or what the plan will be moving forward. So that is the latest right now on the United States Championship situation and why AJ Styles won the title at Madison Square Garden. It looks to be the reason being that MSG did not sell out. Looks to be it might have been a last-minute decision when WWE seen that and caught wind of it. They're like, you know what? Right now is as good a time as any to do it, and they wanted to do it. Can't blame them for it. What are you going to do? I gave you the reason of maybe WWE tried to counter what uh, Kenny Omega did with New Japan. You know, it's a long shot in that being, uh, you know, valid or a valid reason. But listen, I wouldn't put it past these fucking goons in WWE. You know, they got rid of Pyro. They got rid of Pyro because WWE, you know, a lot of people are reporting that um, it's a cost-cutting measure. But WWE feels like they don't need Pyro anymore. Why is that? Because nobody else is using Pyro, now you don't want to use Pyro? So it looks like to me, WWE, you know, they, they don't want to admit it, but, you know, they're watching other things and they're watching the landscape of the wrestling business and they're seeing what's in and what's not in and who's hot and who's not. WWE, you know, they don't want to admit it, but they're keen. They got a keen eye on what's going on. Believe me. At this point, they need to. Because their product is as stale as ever. So they need to figure out what's going to freshen up the product. And if an idea comes from the indies or an idea comes from Ring of Honor or New Japan or even Global Force Wrestling, you know, do it. What's the difference? If it makes your product better, do it. You know, you're the biggest company in the world. We want to see you succeed. You got one of the most talented rosters on this planet. You know, do right by it. But SmackDown Live last night was, like I said, a fun show. Show started off with said United States champion. AJ Styles comes out saying that he wants to be a fighting champion. He you know, he he wants to bring back the US Open challenge and he's going to make the belt the belt the most important thing on SmackDown Live. I love that. I loved it. And they showed all highlight packages of uh, of you know the US title win at Madison Square Garden. Luigi made an appearance on there. They they took you know footage of her reaction on Twitter. You know, they, they showed a bunch of tweets. They just made it feel like a big deal. They made the United States title feel like a big deal, and it needs to feel like a big deal. It really does feel like a big deal. You know, AJ Styles, you know, is going to make that championship. I didn't agree with it. I still don't agree with the, the random title change. I, I do agree that Kevin Owens' title reign was boring. It looks like WWE didn't know what to do with him, you know. But uh, AJ Styles, you know, the United States championship, when John Cena was the United States champion... Everybody, you know, has their gripe about John Cena, but when he was the United States champion, he brought a level of prestige and he made you want to see that title being defended. John Cena, the man, made that title. He made it into a working horse, a working man's championship. And that's what we want out of the Intercontinental Championship. That's what I've been lobbying for with the IC title. You know, for these fucking heels... Having the IC title and the United States Championship and they just sit back and they fucking cheat their way to the top. I don't mind that every now and then for a world title. I don't mind that with a tag team title. It's almost expected at this point. But I want the level of prestige for both the IC title and the United States title. I want them back on babyface workhorses. AJ Styles is a babyface workhorse. He's going to fucking wrestle circles around everybody on that roster. And he's going to put on four or five star matches every single night he's in that ring. I want the same for the IC title. The IC title and the US title were born and bred for baby faces. And if a heel happens to, you know, get a grab or, or get a grasp of those titles, it should be a, a working horse heel as well. You know? I don't mind cheating every now and then in a big match situation to lead to another feud, to extend the feud, you know, to, to lead this feud into a stipulation of sorts. But it, it's the same old song and dance with WWE. It's The Miz, he cheats to win outside interference. It's, it's Maurice, it's Bo Dallas, it's Curtis Axel, it's this, it's that, you know. It, it's bullshit. AJ Styles is not going to cheat to win. AJ Styles is going to go out there and defend the fucking title and he's going to make it prestigious. That's what I like. That's what I want. 
U.S. Open challenge, you know? He wants to make it important. That was the best thing about Monday Night Raw when John Cena was doing it, the U.S. Open challenge. If they want to bring it back on SmackDown Live, I have absolutely no hesitation with that. I'm 100% in support of that. And if that's what you're going to do with AJ Styles, I'm going to be 100% in support of giving him the championship. Because that's what I want out of the U.S. in the IC title. And if they continue down that road, you got my support on that. I think that's a great idea. But what I don't agree with is WWE mixing storylines. Because right now they got John Cena and Rusev. They got AJ Styles and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes out and proclaims that he is the you know, rightful owner of that title. Nobody's getting a shot until he gets a shot at his title first. He, he's demanding a rematch. John Cena, after the statement about the U.S. Open challenge being brought back, he was the first one to accept AJ Styles' challenge. In fact, they were they were ready to do a match right then and there. They got Charles Robinson to come out. They got uh, the, the, the referee out there. They got the ring announcer to uh, announce both men. The bell rung. We had, a, we had a U.S. Championship match to start SmackDown Live. I'm like, holy shit. You're not going to have any problems for me to see a John Cena-AJ Styles match to start SmackDown Live for the United States Championship. Why the fuck would you complain? But then Kevin Owens comes out, says that nobody's getting a shot until he gets his shot. He's the rightful owner. John Cena, what are you doing out here? John Cena's like, listen, you know, you're, you're just like everybody else. Complaining that why I'm back, why I'm here, why I'm in the ring, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you got a problem with it, Come here and do something about it. So then Rusev comes from behind and attacks John Cena, puts him in the accolade. Kevin Owens gets in the ring, gives AJ Styles the pop-up powerbomb, and we have our United States Championship match ruined. And it's later made that it's going to be Kevin Owens and Rusev versus John Cena and AJ Styles in the main event. So I love the way that opening segment came to be. It's just that... John Cena now is staking claim to the U.S. title and says, you know, I got your back for later on in the evening, but we'll worry about the U.S. title situation at a later date. You know, I'm still coming back for that title. Meanwhile, he's got Rusev at Battleground in a fucker flag match, which doesn't spell good news for Rusev at all. Same old song and dance with him, too. Comes back, he looks great. You know, he's getting decent reactions. Hits the wall. The wall's named John Cena. So his first match back... Singles match, anyway. is going to be a battleground, and he's going to end up losing to John Cena. So where does Rusev go from there? Are we going to get another Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, United States Championship match? I don't know. Where does John Cena go? Going into SummerSlam after he beats Rusev. Is he going to challenge AJ Styles for the United States Championship? Are we going to see a multi-person match between these guys at SummerSlam? More multi-person matches, right? We're going to have a fatal four-way, potentially, for the Universal Championship. We're going to have a fatal four-way for the U.S. Championship as well. You know, what about uh, the IC title? People are talking about Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose being involved in the IC title with The Miz. You know, people talk about Bray Wyatt even getting involved. You got so many combustible elements here. You got so much bullshit going on. You're mixing storylines. When you're not done with one, WWE is integrating one storyline into the other, which I don't understand. John Cena's got, got Rusev to worry about, but he's now worried about the U.S. title. You got Seth Rollins, you know, you got Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt there, but now Seth Rollins is coming out to help Dean Ambrose with his battle against The Miz. And Dean Ambrose reciprocated that and helped Seth Rollins in his match with Bray Wyatt on Monday Night Raw. It's like they're, they're intertwining storylines. We don't know where the fuck they're going. It seems like WWE is all over the map as we get into SummerSlam, and I don't understand why they're doing that. I appreciate the unpredictability, but it makes things look sloppy. I want to know clear-cut, and I want good storylines, but I also want to know clear-cut where they're going direction-wise. They're all over the place right now. Instead of staying the course, I won't book John Cena in any U.S. championship match. I'd book John Cena versus Shinsuke Nakamura at, uh, at SummerSlam. That's what I would do, you know? AJ Styles being the U.S. champion, I don't know where they go with the U.S. championship. Match with Kevin Owens, I guess you could do if you want. The rematch at SummerSlam, you know? Now... I just I just said that they took the match off Battleground. I don't know if that's true or not. Looks like it, it looks like it might be on. I don't see why it wouldn't be, you know. But if John Cena is mixed in with the U.S. title, what does that mean for Jinder Mahal? 
You know, there's just so many questions. He's staking claim to the U.S. title. He's got Rusev. He's staking claim to the U.S. title. And then right before SummerSlam, he's going to be thrown into a feud with Jinder Mahal. It's all over the fucking place. If John Cena and Jinder Mahal don't go at it, you know, who does Jinder Mahal have at SummerSlam? There's really nobody else. Unless they do Shinsuke Nakamura and Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. There's just so many fucking open-ended questions. I sound like a dumbass because I don't know what the fuck's going on. WWE's making me sound like a dumbass. I don't know. But that opening skit, that opening segment, very nicely done. I like the integration of all four guys. It made sense. I love the fact that they teased the U.S. Open Challenge being brought back. I'd love to see it brought back next week. We'll see what happens with that next week on SmackDown Live. Jinder Mahal, speaking of Jinder Mahal, he went one-on-one -on -one with Ty Dillinger. The perfect dark match comes out. Ty Dillinger got a great reaction, man. I don't see why he is not featured more prominently on SmackDown Live. I'd love to see Ty Dillinger and AJ Styles for the United States Championship. I think that'd be great. I originally pitched the idea of Ty Dillinger versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship at SummerSlam. I think Ty Dillinger has the fan backing to really make a special moment out of anything, if, even if he does come close to winning a championship in WWE. He got a pretty decent reaction on SmackDown Live. But putting him against Jinder Mahal, having him lose in five minutes to the Coloss, you know, most of this match was commercial. Yeah, we had the picture in picture during this match, but it's not the same. It takes the overall ambiance away from the match. As soon as they came back from commercial, Ty Dillinger was pinned 1-2-3 after a Coloss delivered by Jinder Mahal. I understand you got to make Jinder Mahal look good going into Battleground in the Punjabi prison match, but having Ty Dillinger be his, uh, his opponent and sacrificing Ty Dillinger when Ty Dillinger himself needs to be built up and brought up? I don't understand that. There's nobody else on the roster to give this guy, to feed this guy, you know? Whatever, man. Jinder Mahal, after the match, says that the fans keep disrespecting him, but he's there to speak the truth. He brings class, diversity, and excellence to the WWE. Yet fans still cheer, uh, cheer that snake Randy Orton. Chanting USA will do nothing. But 1.3 billion people in India know he's the greatest world champion of all time. <sighs> Jesus Christ, dude. You, you can't be throwing out statements like that, bro. Can't be throwing out statements like that, bro. I know you look uh, all steroid up, bro. And you look good. And your entrance is, uh, you know, uh, among the best in WWE. But give me a break. You're not the greatest WWE champion of all time. It's good to have confidence. But that's just plain stupidity. WWE then teased the Punjabi prison being in the arena next week for SmackDown Live. So the Punjabi prison, according to Jinder Mahal, is going to bring hell to Randy Orton one week before Battleground. Jey Uso versus Xavier Woods. Uh, this match was quick. But uh, it was full with stupidity. Filled with stupidity. Um, Jay Uso and Xavier Woods went one-on-one. -on -one. Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Jimmy Uso, uh, they were thrown out of the ringside area because of just chaos around ringside. We had Jay Uso taunting Kofi Kingston on the outside. Big E and Kofi got into the ring, which prompted Jimmy Uso to get in the ring. Charles Robinson said, I'm not having any of this, bro. Get the fuck out of here and go back to the rinks, uh, go back to the backstage area. So that's what they did. So Xavier Woods and Jimmy Uso battled one-on-one. -on -one. We had um, this stupid move, which I don't understand, dude. I was thinking, I'm like, come on, man. How could you book these guys to look so goddamn fucking stupid? You got Jay Uso teetering on the middle rope. Xavier Woods climbs the top rope, and he's like, uh, he, he's like a child in the playground. Whee! You know, just fucking riding the middle rope, and he's waiting, and he's waiting, and he's waiting. Xavier Woods climbs the top rope. He delivers a fucking elbow drop onto Jay Uso as he's just teetering on the middle rope. Doesn't Jay Uso know that, okay, I'm sitting here. Let me move out of the way so that, th so that this guy doesn't drop a top rope aerial maneuver on me. He just sits there. He sits there on the middle rope and just allows Xavier Woods to do this move. One, two, three, and Jay Uso loses. How stupid can you make your fucking, your, your, uh, your opponent look? I don't believe that. Absolute stupidity. He didn't have the fucking thought to move out of the way. It just makes them all look like a bunch of fucking retards. I know I might be picking and nitpicking, but 
I mean, give me a break. At least make it believable. So, the New Day get one over on the Usos on SmackDown Live. Also, they make them look retarded. Shane McMahon's backstage, and Naomi comes in. She wants to know who she is fighting next for the Women's Championship, and she hopes it's not Lana. We got uh, Carmella coming in with a letter from her lawyer about bringing James Ellsworth back in, in uh, you know, what... I hope doesn't happen uh, happen here because Ellsworth doesn't need to be on the show, period. Um, Carmella's like, listen, Daniel Bryan's full of shit. He made the wrong decision. I got a letter from my attorney. Shane McMahon looks at it. Oh, you got, you got a letter from your attorney. Uh, he rips it up. In a savage manner, he rips it up. Decision stands, honey. I love that. Shane McMahon was a complete fucking savage last night. Um, so Carmella's like, she storms off. She's fucking frustrated. She's got the Money in the Bank briefcase. So then all these women come into frame. Who are you going to defend the title against, right? You got uh, Lana and Tamina, and then you got Charlotte, and then you got Natty, and then you got Becky, right? I'm like, oh my God. The way all these women just came into frame, it's like as if they were just standing off to the side, right? As soon as Shane McMahon ripped that letter from Carmella's attorney, fucking Charlotte comes walking into frame. Are you kidding me, Shane McMahon? How many times is Lana going to get a women's championship match? Now she's standing in the corner just waiting for the fucking cue. Okay, go. Nobody wants to hear from you. Charlotte Flair, I am the queen. Are you kidding me? So then you got Becky coming and making fun of Natty. She inadvertently calls her Brett. Right? Now he's like, oh, Charlotte, how many times are you going to live off your father's legacy? And then Becky's like, yeah, coming from you, Na uh, Brett. Oh, excuse me, Natty. So a bunch of, you know, nitpicking and, and just catty behavior from the women. So uh, Shane books a battleground match, a fatal five-way elimination. Are you fucking kidding me? So you got Tamina, Lana, Natty, Charlotte, and Becky. Right? This is SummerSlam. What is the biggest name for SummerSlam to go up against Naomi? It's going to be Charlotte. I don't doubt for a second at all that any of these other women are going to even come close to Charlotte. You want to book SummerSlam to be the biggest event of the summer, you book the biggest name in the biggest championship match for your division. Charlotte versus Naomi. There you go. And then from there, you can have Charlotte versus Becky because I'm waiting for Becky to get another shot at the championship. She's due. But I think Charlotte's going to win the Fiddle Five-Way at Battleground. It just makes sense right now. So they did book a tag team match. Uh, it's going to be Natty and Tamina versus Charlotte and Becky later on on SmackDown Live. Uh, Renee Young interviewed Baron Corbin. They replayed Shinsuke Nakamura's attack on him last week. Renee said Shinsuke is clearly not afraid. Corbin said Shinsuke has to learn that he's not Mr. Money in the Bank. He is. He said it'll be Sayonara Nakamura. Kevin Dunn, I'm sure, wrote that line. Ooh, uh, Sayonara Nakamura? That's what I say uh, when I get the check and he uh, finishes the sushi. <laughs> Kevin Dunn clearly wrote that line. Baron Corbin even laughed. He also turned, uh, uh, I don't know, he looked like he was embarrassed almost to read that fucking shit. Sayonara Nakamura. Come on, man. So, so fucking cheesy. Anyway, uh, Nakamura came to the ring for their match. Full-on entrance. No pyro, thank God. Um, I also appreciate that the announcers do not speak during Nakamura's entrance, and they just let the crowd do what they gotta do. I love it. So, this was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, Baron Corbin makes his entrance. Nakamura makes his entrance. Before Baron Corbin even hits the ringside area, Nakamura has attacked him already. They start brawling on the outside. Referees and officials, you know, break it up. Match that was supposed to be was never meant to be. Didn't even take place. So all these two have been doing is going back and forth, getting cheap shots on one another. They finally said, you know what? We're going to do it at Battleground. Like, we didn't expect that to, you know, to happen. You know, the next thing I know... 
with two weeks left to go, is that the Money in the Bank briefcase is on the line, and Nakamura's winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. Because Baron Corbin's got to put it on the line, or he's like, oh, I could beat you, I'll put this on the line, like a fucking dumbass. Why would you do that? Why would you willingly put up a world championship opportunity against Nakamura? I don't understand that. It should not be contested over. I hope that they don't go that route. I'm not saying that they will, but WWE is stupid enough to do something like that. So we'll see. Nakamura and Baron Corbin booked for Battleground. was supposed to take place last night. Did not. Big ringside brawl, and uh, the match was made for the pay-per-view. Cena walks in on Styles in the locker room, says that uh, we will do this U.S. title thing soon uh, because I accept, and I will accept, but um, I will have your back tonight, you know? I will have your back tonight against Rusev and Kevin Owens. What a, what a commendable job, John Cena. What a respectable man you are. Thank you. Charlotte and Becky versus Natalia and Tamina. Tamina and Natalia win here. Um, Charlotte delivered a very nice exploded suplex, but then Lana came down and distracted Charlotte. Four-time women's champion distracted by fucking little old Lana on the outside. You're a four-time women's champion. You are the queen of SmackDown Live! And you're being distracted by a non-entity, someone who's a complete waste of fucking roster space. Right? You're distracted by her on the outside. Meanwhile, behind Charlotte's back, Natty's tagging in Tamina, and it was, boom, one, two, three. Super kick. Done. Tamina pins Charlotte on SmackDown Live. I didn't stutter. Tamina pins Charlotte on SmackDown Live. Any more reason you need while Natalia and Tamina winning this match? Uh, not to believe that Charlotte's going to win the fucking five-way match at, uh, at Battleground? It's going to happen. She's being pinned by fucking Tamina, sure. And if Lana's getting the best of her, she will win, believe me. Maria Kanellis walking down the hallway to the male locker room. Don't get any bright ideas, people. She ain't going in there. She just wants Sami Zayn. So Chad Gable opens the door, and he's like, uh, you looking for Sami Wow Wow? Whatever the fuck that means. She asked what it meant. It's like some inside thing that they got in the locker room. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it has to do with uh, Sami Zayn's, uh, you know. Uh, maybe uh, you know when the when when the women see it, they they're like, oh, Sami, wow, wow, you know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, she's looking for Sami Zayn because she wants an apology. So Sami Zayn finds both Maria and Mike Canellis, and they're all lovey dovey. He gave her a rose, and Sami Zayn's like, hello. I'm here. Hello? You want your apology? I'm here. And then Maria looks over at her. Oh, look at her. Oh, she looks over at Sami Zayn. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? You know, I've been asking you for apology for a couple of weeks now. Where's my apology? Sami Zayn's like, listen, I gave you an apology. Quite frankly, I'm sick of apologizing to you. Right? And then he's like, Mike, what are you even doing here? I mean, is, is Maria the active performer on the brand? And you're, the, and you're like the valet? Like, what are you even doing here? Are you, are you going to compete on SmackDown Live? So, Maria, you know, has this fucking dumbfounded look on her face. Mike, Mike Kanellis takes a vase, a glass vase with roses in it, and he smashes it over Sami Zayn's head. So, it looks like we got Mike Kanellis versus Sami Zayn. Not officially booked, but it looks like it's going to be booked for Battleground. And, again, Sami Zayn in the wrong place at the wrong time. You think Mike Kanellis is going to lose his debut match on WWE TV at a pay-per-view? Of course not. So Sami Zayn, yet another pay-per-view event in which he's a sacrificial lamb to get somebody else over. When is it going to be Sami Zayn's turn? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, but JD, Sami Zayn is a jobber, man. No, he's not. He's not a jobber. I, I, don't, I don't understand why everybody's bypassing Sami Zayn and, you know, he's just fucking getting the short end of the stick. Give me a break. Don't understand it. I'm very intrigued to see what these two guys do in the ring. You know, Mike Bennett ain't bad. Well, Mike Kanellis ain't bad. Sami Zayn, clearly, we know what he can do. Should be a good match. But I don't I don't know why they continue putting Sami Zayn in situations in which he's not going to win. How is he going to... Why would he win at, at, at the, at the pay-per-view? Why would Mike Kanellis lose his debut match? Stupid. It's like Rusev. He's going to... Like, he's really going to beat John Cena in a fucking flag match. Come on, man. You know? I want some unpredictability, but Jesus fucking Christ... So blatant. Fashion Files, they had a Western theme because they were in San Antonio. Um, and they were sexy fashion rangers. They showed 
clips of Chuck Norris in the opening credits. They uh, rode in on a horsey on a stick. You know, Tyler Breeze looking to lasso Zack Ryder. He couldn't do it. The lasso got wrapped around him. So then Fandango and Zack Ryder engage in a little conversation. Zack Ryder's like, what the fuck is going on here? Mojo Raleigh comes in and he's like, what the fuck did I walk into over here? Right? So then Zack Ryder's like, yeah, just like uh, what you walked into with the Battle Royal last week, right? Where you eliminated me. And Mojo's like fucking making common sense of it. Bro, listen, it's a Battle Royal. Every man for himself. I didn't mean it. Don't take it seriously, bro. Zack Ryder, broski, Long Island IZ, bro. Come on, bro. What are you doing, bro? Let's go, uh, you know, spike our hair and go get some chicks numbers, will you? So Zack Ryder's like, uh, you know, still, he's upset. And then Mojo's like, you know, listen, we got shit to do. Let's get back on track and, and we got business to take care of. And then Zack Ryder's, Zach Ryder's like, yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, we got business to take care of, you know, but the fashion police, they, they think that uh, the uh, hype bros destroyed their office. Meanwhile, they had nothing to do with it. So they're still on the case of who destroyed their office a couple of weeks ago. Who, who the fuck could it be? Who's going to be the Ascension again? Give me a break. Meanwhile, while all this was going on, the horsey on a stick was stolen. And Tyler Breeze and Fandango thought that uh, fucking alien, alien cowboys... Ghost aliens took the fucking, uh, the horsey. So now next week they're going to be the X-Files. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Still entertaining, but, uh, these guys are worth so much more than just cheesy comedy. Um, John Cena and AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens and Rusev in the main event. Very fun. Very good tag team match. Uh, this was pretty much the baby faces being beaten down. John Cena and AJ Styles traded hot tags. Styles... Got the, the the late hot tag. Uh, he came in. Owens was in. Rusev tagged in to, kept the, to keep on the offense. Styles came back with an inseguri. Cena got the hot tag. Landed an attitude adjustment on Owens for the win. One, two, three. Nothing out of the ordinary here. They sent the crowd home happy with the baby faces winning. After the match, John Cena and AJ Styles had a stare down over the United States Championship. John Cena then raised AJ Styles' hand. And they both celebrated as the show went off the air. I don't know what's going on with the U.S. title. I don't know where they're going with SummerSlam. Right now, it looks like WWE doesn't even know where they're going with SummerSlam. But all in all, it was a fun show. And, um, you know, it was just a well thought out. It, it flowed well. SmackDown on Tuesday night. I really don't have any gripes with it outside the women's Fatal 5-Way being booked for the pay-per-view. Uh, I think that, they, you know, that they, they can do better with that. And the fact that WWE seems to be uh, mixing storylines together because John Cena and Rusev and Kevin Owens and AJ Styles and now John Cena wants the United States Championship and Kevin Owens is staking claim to the United States Championship. It's just all out of whack right now. So hopefully we have, uh, we do have about five and a half weeks left to go until SummerSlam. But by the time Battleground is over, SmackDown's only going to have three weeks. Meanwhile, Monday Night Raw's building uh, quite nicely on, on Monday nights for SummerSlam. So, Monday Night Raw has six weeks to build towards SummerSlam. They don't have a, uh, another branded pay-per-view coming up. SmackDown still has to get through Battleground. And we still got two weeks left to go till that. So, SmackDown better start, you know, getting plans for SummerSlam ready now. Because I don't like when a pay-per-view is kind of in the middle of what's going on with SummerSlam. SummerSlam should be of the utmost importance right now. And I just hope WWE knows what they're doing going into SummerSlam because I want it to be. Especially after last year. I was not impressed with SummerSlam last year at all. I thought it was a shitty fucking pay-per-view. But I hope this year WWE goes all out and gives us a SummerSlam worthy of being uh, the second biggest pay-per-view of the year. But thank you guys so much, man. I am JD. Thank you all for the support on the channel. Hit that thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. And hit that subscribe button down below with that bell for your notification. I'll be live on Twitch later on tonight for NXT at 8 p.m. I'll be live starting at... 7 p.m., so we'll go to 7 through 9 when NXT is over, and then I'll be on Out of Nowhere with Joe Cronin, so make sure you guys tune into that. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you all later tonight for the live stream. Until then, make it a great Wednesday, and I will see you all later live on Twitch and then on Joe's channel for Out of Nowhere. I'll talk to you later.